Here we go. Everybody get your coffee cup. We're going to give a toast to all of our teachers, first responders, and military personnel. You ready? Here we go. Cups up. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Randy with a morning word, and we are giving a toast and a shout out to all of our first responders. Our teachers, God bless you on the front lines and all of our military personnel. Thank you for the job that you do. Our morning word this morning is happy. Happy, finding happy. And uh, that is something that eludes us. If you have your Bible, we're going to go to a verse in just a minute. But uh, before we do that, I want to give a little prelude here. Uh, my, my grandfather, and among others, would uh, uh, have all these sayings, and you've heard me quote him a bunch of times. And I don't know if this came from him, uh, but I, I've heard it. Uh, numerous times and I've repeated it so, so, so much that I think it sometimes originated with me and it, and it's this saying, you wouldn't be happy. I wrote it down. You wouldn't be happy making a six figure income tasting popsicles. You wouldn't be happy tasting popsicles making six figures. And when I, you know, when I heard somebody say that one time, you know, you wouldn't be happy making six figures tasting donuts. I go, dude, you don't know me very well. You don't know me very well, but it, it's true. And, and here's, this is what's true about it. And it's true about me and it's true about you. Whatever the it is that we think will make us happy, eventually it doesn't make us happy anymore. So we find out that the thing that we thought was going to bring us happiness really just left us disappointed because we quote unquote thought we found happy for a little while and it uh, got away from us. And so we are forever pursuing happiness. We pursue happiness in every shape, form, and fashion. Uh, some good, most of them not so good. You and I ended up in high school, early college, so forth and so on in our early years. Uh, in the land of uh, oh no, ran our life off in the ditch trying to find happy, only to find out that happy wasn't where we thought it was. <clears throat> we thought happiness started about 10, 10 p.m. at the Cowboy. It didn't. About 5 a.m. the next morning, I realized that I wasn't happy and so forth and so on, and the story goes on. The beats, the, the song's the same, uh, only the names change. So we always think that it's the next relationship, the next person, the next home, the next job, the next $10,000, the next raise, you know, the next car, the next truck, uh, the next dress, you know, the next date, the next, you know, whatever it is. Uh, that we think that that's going to bring us happiness. And so therefore we pursue it only to attain it and realize that it did not uh, fulfill its promise that we thought that it had for us. It, it, leave, it leaves us disappointed. Now, why is that? Well, we've been wired differently and we don't understand that. When you and I, and, and it's, all, it's for all people, even people who aren't Christians, we've been wired so that we cannot find, fully and finally find happy without God. Happy does not exist without God. Because happiness is the satisfaction of the soul. That's what it is. It's the satisfaction of the soul and only God can bring that. There's nothing designed in all of creation to bring us full and final happiness except God himself. It's found in the life, uh, it's found in, a, found in a relationship with God. So therefore, the pursuit of happiness is not found by seeking happiness itself. We have been duped into believing that happy is something or someone <clears throat> or some experience. And that it's, it, we think that happy is the goal. The goal is happy. No, the goal is not happy. Happy is the consequence. Happy is the consequence of pursuing another goal. Are y'all ready to go to the scripture this morning and find out what that is? Let's go to the scripture and find out what that is. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Chapter 5, verse 9. Paul speaking to the church at Corinth. Therefore, we make it our aim. Now, what are you usually aiming at? What are you aiming at? Your goal, your vision, okay, your purpose. We make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. To be well-pleasing to 
him. Now, I'm going to flip over to Colossians chapter 1. You can join me if you have your Bible. But let me just flip over there. This is a prayer that I often pray uh, for my family, for myself. <clears throat> and this was Paul's prayer for the church at Colossae. Chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. That's why I make it my prayer. And to ask that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Watch this now. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, bring fruitful into every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Here's what happiness is. It's the result it's the result. It's not the goal. It's the byproduct. It's the consequence of pursuing a life that is well-pleasing to God. You and I know this. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've heard it said in marriage conferences and in talking to one another, and we've heard it, you know, seen it on little plaques at, at uh, Cracker Barrel and all this kind of stuff. All right, here's what it says. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? If mama's not happy, no one's happy. And so what's true in the house physically is true in the house spiritually. When the Lord is displeased, it doesn't matter what you have or what you're doing or where you've been. You're, there's, something in, there's something that's lacking inside of us. But when we lay down our head at night and we know that we've been well-pleasing to the Lord, that's happy. It's a consequence. The Bible says it this way. It's 50 times, for one of the words of happy, used 50 times in the King James Version. Another word for happy is used 47 times in the King James Version. And over half of those times, the word, instead of, the word that's used instead of happy is blessed. And the blessed life is found by living a life or pursuing a life that's pleasing to God. God says when you do the things that I give to you. Now listen, here's, here's why that's so important. Because when God tells us and when God gives us his word and says to obey it, whether you and I obey it or not has no bearing on the eternal joy of God. God's happy in and of himself. We're displeasing to God when we don't do it because God knows that we are hurting ourselves, that the word of God is giving to us, given to us when we obey it, it pleases God. But why is God pleased? Because he sees that his children are blessed. So when we live a life, to, when we pursue a life to, uh, that is well-pleasing to God, that is a, a life that honors God in every area, that has integrity and character and demonstrates the, the uh, Christ-likeness, we find out that not only is God pleased, but when God is pleased, we found out that we're pleased. Why? Because we have done the things that God knew already in advance would bless our life. We've already talked about this in a prior, uh, a prior um, morning word, the blessed life. But here we find out that we can be happy. Now listen, this is why it's so important. Because a man that's in prison doing life without parole can be happy by living a God-honoring life in prison, by pursuing God, pursuing Christ in prison. Uh, that the, the, listen, that the, the widow woman and the widower, the widowed man, they can be happy because they're, they can live a life that's well-pleasing to God. They can, and God is well-pleased and, and the life that we live that pleases God turns out to bless us and makes us happy. It's happy. It's the satisfaction of the soul. It's the stimulation of the emotions. God made us emotional people, okay? And our emotions are stirred in the direction of joy and, uh, and happiness. Remember, joy is more internal and deep. Happiness is more external and superficial. But happiness can be attained in this world, but not by chasing it. You can't chase happy and find it. You pursue God and, and happiness follows. You don't chase blessings, you chase God, the blessor, and you find your blessings. And we know that when God is, when God is pleased, we, we, 
our soul is pleased. Our soul is happy. We find it for ourselves that we live a life that's well pleasing to God. And you know what? The, the life that's well pleasing to God is pleasing to us. The, the life that we live, when we live a life that makes God happy, we find out that, he, <clears throat> excuse me, we're happy. That's what, that's what it means. That's what it means. Happiness is not, and, and again, I'm going to say this again, and I'll probably say it again and again before I'm over with. You and I will never find happiness as long as happiness is the goal. We find happiness as a consequence of the goal of making, of being well-pleasing to God. Happiness is the consequence. That's what, you know, your grandmother, she's in there laboring at the stove. She's wearing an apron and it's Thanksgiving day and everyone's sitting at the fireplace. Everyone's watching the football game. Everyone's drinking coffee and eggnog and eating cake and all that. And where's grandma? Grandmother or, or mom or whoever, they're in there, you know, they're sweating bullets. They got, they got flour everywhere. They got grease everywhere. They got food everywhere. And you walk up to them, you say, uh, you know, mama, mama, granny, whatever you call me, you know, are you happy? Oh yes, honey. Well then, I, I get you know you're in here laboring. You're laboring at this. You're laboring at this whole dinner. We're we are enjoying the day, and you're working your fanny off. And here's what they'll say. All of them, I don't care who it is if they if they're worth their salt. Honey, this makes me happy. I'm this. I love to do this. And you say. Who, who loves to stand at the stove and cook all day while everybody else is in the other room laughing? And it's the person who, it's the person who finds happiness as a consequence of blessing other people. See, when she sits down, when she finally takes that apron off, <clears throat> and she sees, excuse me, <clears throat> she sees her family seated at the table, enjoying the blessings of the Lord. She's happy. And God has prepared a table before us. The Bible says that he has pre prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He has anointed our head with oil and our cup runs over. And when we sit down at the table of God and partake of the blessings of God, we're happy. And that makes God happy. When we are the Bible says, blessed is the man that is happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, this is what makes him happy. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his word, law, he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. See, God said, if you'll delight yourself in my word and separate yourself from the wicked ways and the paths of sinners, you'll be blessed. You'll find happiness. It pleases me and it'll please and bless you. <clears throat> and so I hope that we all can see with Christmas and uh, a new season coming, uh, you know, a, a gift season and a, a season of gratitude and a season of giving that we find out that, you know, that's what Jesus said, it's more blessed to give. In other words, it makes you happier to give than to receive. Why? Because if we are like our heavenly father, the things that please him, please us. The things that make him happy, make us happy. And God says that it's better to give than to receive. I would rather give a gift that someone really enjoys than to receive a gift. Uh, I mean, I'm at the age now that, you know, I've had all the toys and broke half of them and gave the rest of them away and sold some. I don't need any more stuff. I just need a little more time to sit around and watch my children and my family be happy. That's all I want. That's what makes me happy is just hanging out, watching everybody else be happy. And that's what's pleasing to the Lord. So I want us to not get caught up in the trap of trying to pursue happiness with purchases and experience. I mean, you know, uh, pers other pursuits of life and, and, and remember that um, happiness is not a goal to, to attain it's the consequence of a life that's pleasing to God. And when God's happy, everybody's happy. Isn't that right? Can you get a thumbs up and a couple of hearts on that one? How about that? To all of you that tuned in this morning, God bless you. It makes my heart happy. I never knew that a pandemic <clears throat> 
would come our way that would force us to go on social media like this and that God would would bless it in so many ways and and uh, so many people would uh, become partake. When we started, we had like uh, 20 or 30 people on here, you know? And, you know, we got 110 people this morning and by this afternoon, it'll be a, a thousand views probably, you know, if it's worth a flip. But the fact that people are listening to it in Indiana, Nevada, the Philippines, you know, um, God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much for your support. I hope and pray that a morning word is being a blessing to you and that you're getting your day started off being happy, knowing that God is happy. We love you guys. Continue to pray. Remember what's going on in our country. I'm looking for a resurrection. It ain't over till God says it's over. Have a great day. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Good Lord willing and the saints don't rise. Peace out.